If you have a process to send out a survey request every single time you close a case in your um, Dynamics 365 customer engagement environment, you might start to frustrate some of your customers if they are the primary person responsible for cases for their organization. So if they're the ones that are opening cases with you all the time, maybe they've got 20 cases a week. Do they really want to get 20 emails requesting them to give feedback? So what you could do is before we go ahead and send the request to say, hey, will you complete this survey and give feedback? We can check to see how many surveys they've already responded to within the week. Um, and if they've already responded to one or two or however many is important to you, we can go ahead and say, no, we don't want to send them anything else. So let's go ahead and have a look at how we can achieve that. So we're going to go into Microsoft Flow and I've got something set up to check the number of surveys. So let's go ahead and look at this. All right, so our first thing is going to be our trigger to check um, when a case is updated. And we're basically going to check to see if, um, if the status reason is equal to five. So was it actually resolved? Okay, so if it's not, we're not gonna do anything else. We're just gonna leave it right there. If it has been resolved, we need to do a couple of things before we can determine if we're going to send the survey invite. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the um, contact. Now, depending on how you do your cases, if the contact is in the customer field, you're going to use that as the identifier. If your contact, if you're using a contact field, then you're going to use that instead. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a compose um, action and we're going to go ahead and put in an input and the input is going to be to add day, a number of days to the um, current date okay so to do that we're going to do add days UTC now is basically today and then what I want to do is I want to um, count backwards I'm going to do negative seven so we're going to get the date from seven days ago okay so once we've done that, then what we're going to be able to do is we're going to go ahead and look for the survey responses, but we need to do a, a little bit of a, a filter query to be able to determine well which survey responses do we want to get. So the first thing that's important is we might have several surveys that we're sending out. So we don't want to um, not send a survey if they haven't completed our case closure survey. They might have completed surveys for other things. So we need to pull in the source survey identifier, which is going to be an ID, which we can get. I'll show you in just a moment where we can get that from, but that's basically going to be from the survey entity itself. So we're going to have to put in that ID first of all. And then we're basically saying that the state code is actually responded so that someone has actually responded to it. Um, and then what we're doing is we're saying and the created on date is greater than the output from this step right here. So in other words, the created on date of those survey responses is greater than seven days ago. And that the um, respondent email address on the survey response equals the email address from the contact. So that's how we're going to know we can we can capture the survey responses that somebody has filled out and we know that we're getting the right ones. All right, so then we need another compose step. And for this one, what we're doing is we're going to um, get the number of survey responses that the list step has been able to count. So we, for this, we're using um, something that says length and then body list related survey responses, which is this step right here and then we're getting a value. We're counting the number of surveys that have been returned. All right, so then what we've got is a condition. So we need to make sure that the output of this step right here, so checking the number of responses, the output that is provided is equal to zero. If it's not, meaning they've actually filled out some surveys within the past seven days for our specific case closure survey, we're not going to do anything. We're going to stop it right there. If it is equal to zero, meaning that they haven't actually responded to anything in the last seven days, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create an invitation for a specific um, survey that we've got set up in Forms Pro. So we're using that Forms Pro connector. We're using the email address from the contact record. And then we're basically filling out and saying, OK, well, this is the first name for the contact, the last name. We are linking the survey uh, invitation to the incident, which is the case. And we use the case ID. 
We're then also um, linking and the recipient is the contact and then the contact ID. And then we can put in other parameters. So we've got a case number, case title. I could put in case origin, case created date, and that's based on what I've set up on the survey. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and send out an email and we're going to use um, the, the fields that we've, that we've gathered from the contact record, from the case record, and we're going to put in that invitation link from the previous step where we've created the survey invitation. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to, um, let's just get out of there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to resolve a case. Now this case is for Jane Doe. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve this. Yep, this is all done, fixed, no problem. And then we'll just be able to see that that, um, that flow will have run in just a moment. Now, one last thing before I forget, if I go to advanced find, just to show you where you can go ahead and get that um, survey ID. So let's go up. Try one last time and do this correctly. All right, so Forms Pro Survey. So there is our um, entity, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to edit the columns. I'm going to add um, all the way down at the bottom here. We've got the Source Survey Identifier. Uh, let's just then make that a little bit bigger, and let's go ahead and look at the results. So we can see there that we have our um, ID. Now you can go ahead and you could export that and then you've got a list of your IDs, but you're basically going to need to get this ID and use that in your query. Okay. All right. So let's go back to flow and there's the one that just ran 48 seconds ago. So we can have a look and see what it does. So when the record is updated, yep, yeah, there's our case. Check to see if it's resolved. Yes, it was. Get the contact. The contact is um, Jane Doe and last seven days was the 8th of August. List the related survey responses. Check the number of surveys. The number of surveys is three. All right, so the number of surveys is three. That's more than the zero we've said. So the final condition is basically saying that's false. So we have not created an invitation or sent out an email. So hopefully that helps. Obviously the number of responses is up to you in terms of um, being able to set the um, uh, yep. So being able to set our condition. So where we've got the um, the output equaling zero. So your output might be okay. Well we want them to fill out no more than three or four or five or ten or whatever it is that's important to you in your organisation. So hopefully this helps. Um, let me know what you think. Leave um, some comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.